You hope I have better drops? Oops. Um, we've gotten a Hellsire, a bunch of Worldstone shards, a bunch of attempts at like rare circlets. I think like four or five rare circlets. Gotten two skillers, three skillers. That was weird timing, huh? Look at that. We got three skillers. You just have to will it into existence. Basically, just trying to build a strong cow farming character on a super budget out of the he had and a minimum uh, investment of of high runes, basically, right? Build a character that can actually go start doing the farming. And not only that, a character that could like get into hell fast, like maybe I want to do this for next season, right? So I put together this javazon tooltip damage says 28,000 to 29,000 damage on plague javelin on poison javelin uh it's 14,000 damage the difference between the two abilities poison javelin ticks over one second so it's within one second it has dealt this amount of damage and then plague javelin it's dealing you know 28,000 damage but it's occurring over three seconds right so basically it's one second damage is closer to like nine point 3,000 damage. The difference is that it will deal a total amount of damage equal to 28,000. Obviously, this is without resistances and all that, right? What we're looking for is maximum clear speed and also being able to stack magic find. So when I'm looking at the skill distribution for this, keep in mind, this character is not built to go survive other things. It can go survive other things if you're willing to play really hard. But it's not really built to go survive other things. Um, we have a whopping 1600 health, but we are in <laughs> negative cold resistance, negative lightning resistance, negative poison res. We have high fire res, that's mostly due to Alder's boots. And we have no hit recovery breakpoints. Uh, our FCR is absolutely garbage. Not that Amazon gets good FCR, but if I wanted to teleport, that really wouldn't really be an option at the 32 breakpoint. And a couple of the other important things to pick up from this screen, just because, just before we move on, is our run walk sits at a hefty 131% faster run walk, and our pierce is around 90%, right? 91%. The build's simple. You max poison jav, you max plague javelin. Uh, plague javelin is what you're going to use for cows. Poison jav is for the synergy, and you max javelin and spear mastery. The benefit of poison in Plague Javelin is that you don't need to hit the monster. The attack rating means nothing. In fact, I don't even know why this has attack rating on it. Um, you don't need to hit the monster. It deals in AoE of poison damage. You don't need to hit something for it to walk into the cloud of poison damage. You literally just throw it at the monster and they all get poisoned and then they all die. To that end, I put one point into Critical Strike just because it's a prereq for Pierce, you do want Pierce. Why is Pierce so important? If I throw a Javelin at a group of monsters and it hits the first one and doesn't Pierce, the poison stops in front of that monster. Now, they very well may still walk through the poison, but 100% Pierce means that the Javelin will travel through uh, whatever it would hit or miss and the poison damage will make its way through a group of monsters more quickly. That's why Pierce is so important here. The difference between evade and dodge. Dodge means that if you are standing still or you're attacking, you have a chance to dodge an attack. On top of that, it gives you hit recovery. So dodge is really important if I intend on standing still and attacking things, right? I have no intention of doing that. I have 131 uh, increased run walk. I have no intention of standing near anything ever. So I have evade. Now you might be like, oh, you want to be able to dodge things while you're running. No, I don't even want to get hit by stuff. I don't even want to be near stuff so that it could even hit me. I'm literally just putting my dump points into evade because it increases my movement speed. And if I happen to run too close to something, I will then have a chance to dodge. That's like icing on the cake. If we look at the gear that we chose, I came in with or four priorities. Plus to skills, movement speed, 
attack speed, increased poison damage. So we're using a Titans. Again, other than the plus two to Amazon skills, no other stat on Titans matters for a poison jabber. If it's ethereal, that's cool. I guess that's pretty, does nothing for you. And if you have perfect ED, that's cool, does nothing for you. The only slam I would want to see on this is increased attack speed or minus two enemy poison res. A Shaco. A Shaco says magic find and plus two to all skills. Um, you could make the argument for running Indarials, which also says plus two to all skills, can get three sockets, uh, and also has increased attack speed. The only reason why increased attack speed isn't that important on a Plague Javelin Thrower is because the skill has a cooldown. The cooldown is universal. The cooldown lasts as long as the cooldown. So no matter how fast I attack, that is only going to increase the speed that the single animation takes, and then I still have to wait for the cooldown. Now, having increased attack speed does mean that every time I do the animation of the throw, it would be faster. But since I'm not able to attack at my maximum attack speed with the Plague Javelin, increased attack speed has basically a quarter, I'd say a quarter of the normal relevance that it would on this character. My Shaco only has one socket in it, and I had a single poison facet. Uh, Cat's Eye Amulet, it has run walk increased attack speed. Um, you could have a plus two skill run walk amulet, and I think that would be pretty decent. On a budget, getting a Cat's Eye with anything on it is great. The added benefit, it also has 25 decks, which basically means that between our Raven Frost, uh, which will also have, you know, up to 20 decks in this. We're looking at 45 dexterity, which means that we can put more points into health. Lidless Wall, um, it says plus two to all skills. The other really important thing for it, honestly, is increased mana, energy, and mana per kill. With this Lidless on and no other sources of mana or mana regen, we do not need to drink mana potions. We will regenerate the mana that we would normally lose casting Plague Javelin, by the time we hit the next pack of cows. I like Triangles more than Venom Grip. They both say plus 15 poison skill damage. Triangles also has uh, cold resistance, which I think is more important than poison resistance, which is what Venom Grip gives you. I'm using a gold wrap. Obviously it's a crappy gold wrap, but it's slammed with increased attack speed. So 30 increased attack speed here, uh, as well as a 20 increased attack speed here, does mean that I'm throwing these Titans at a decent clip. You could obviously have more attack speed, but I think this piece with the 30 MF is kind of the best that you're going to do. Basically, I think 40 MF here with 30 increased attack speed is your best bet. I can't really see anything else that I think is important. I'm using a plus skill. This could be any plus skill. I would prefer if it was a Stone of Jordan. I just don't have an extra Stone of Jordan to put onto this class right now. If it was an SOJ, then I might be able to get off of the Lidless. If I could get off the Lidless, I've also played around with just running a Millabregas in the slot for the 60 MF, along with whatever corruption and uh, sockets that you could put onto it. Ravenfrost, easy include here. The plus to dex means that the Titans are easier to use. Plus to mana is really nice, again, just to be able to keep our mana pool and not have to actually drink potions, which decreases run efficiency. And they can't be frozen. You need it somewhere. It might as well be on a Ravenfrost. If you have a can't be frozen on a skill ring, I think it would be fine to swap over to that. It does mean that you're going to have to put more points into dexterity, depending on what your other gear looks like. But Ravenfrost is kind of easy. And again, this build is supposed to be, how can I run the fastest cows as possible on a budget? I'm using Elders here. The reason why I'm using these ones in particular is because I slammed 10 faster run walk. So these Elders say 50% faster run walk. On top of that, they have a bunch of flat uh, fire res and they have plus 50 health. On the chest, I'm running a plain Mavinas. I've slammed a lot of Mavinas. This is the best one that I've got thus far. You could run any plus skill armor that you want here with sockets and put poison facets into it. Uh, two to Amazon skills says plus 3000 damage on 25 to 25, 28 to 28. 3000 damage. It also says faster run walk. Uh, an even more budget version of this build could be running Mav's Belt and Mav's Helmet, also with sockets in it. People have asked me, what do you think about Bramble? A perfect Bramble. Well, one, a perfect Bramble is going to cost you a Sir and an Ohm, which is expensive, to roll it yourself. Getting a perfect Bramble would be big damage. 
let's look at Trang's gloves as an example. Trang's gloves says plus 15% poison skill damage. If I take off Trang's gloves, I have 25,000 damage, right? And it's actually not even, it's rolled up to 25,000. With Trang's gloves, this says 28,000, right? So Mac, that's like 3,500 damage. That's huge. First thing to remember is that the percentile poison damage adds to the base poison damage, not an additive function. So if I add another 50% damage, it's not going to take my current tooltip and add 50%. It's going to take the base damage and add 50% onto that and then add that to my tooltip. So let's say a perfect bramble would give me 10,000 poison damage. That's huge, right? Is it though? So if my Mavinas is adding 3,000 damage for plus two skills, right? That means that if I had three five five facets in this, I would already have plus 15% and minus 15% to their resistances. What does that mean? That's basically adding an additional 30% to your total damage. That's like adding two Trang Gloves, right? Two Trang Gloves gets you 3k each time, or 3,500 each time. That's 7,000, right? So 7,000 plus the 3,000 from a plus two skill armor is 10,000 damage. The issue with Bramble is that Bramble has two other stats that are kind of good. Bramble has 50% faster hit recovery, and you have no intention of getting hit while running around on this character. And also has like fire res, I think. I promise you, I've never died in cows. I started playing this character in cows at level 75. I've never died in cows. I've never even been close to dying. I've never been hit by enough elemental damage from a like a dual enchanted cow to kill me. Bramble's just not good enough, and it's too difficult to get a perfect Bramble, and a perfect Bramble is too expensive. Down here, what do you got? You have an Annie charm. This is probably the most expensive charm that you're going to need. Everything else, I have one Geeds just for the magic find. Everything else is just a Javelin uh, skiller. Plus to life is nice. I think that faster run walk is honestly the best one that you can get, but everything else is either plus to life or magic find, just based off of the extra uh, the extra charms that I had. Honestly, all of these should just say seven, seven to magic find and anything else that you can get on them. Nothing on here is even, uh, well, maybe these, maybe Trangs with magic find. You could like demand a high rune for it. You don't need this, but it's a skill ring. Like, sure, you give somebody whatever high rune that they're looking for, and SOJ would be really nice here. A gold wrap. All right, any throwaway Raven Frost. Any boots that say you run fast or, at, I don't know, you could put can't be frozen on these. You could be using rites of passage. Um, a Shaco. A bad Shaco. I don't even think you could get a high rune for this, right? Could I get a Vex for this at this point? I don't even know. Any cat's eye. In fact, get a cat's eye with a crappy corruption because people are going to be selling that for cheap. Get a two lidless with a crappy corruption and you have a you have a completely geared out character who can clear cows in five minutes. For the mercenary, the mercenary's entire purpose is to be a vigor bot. So we have an act one fire mercenary. The only four pieces of gear that are even vaguely important here are we have a rock stopper which has flat 10 pdr and i also slammed all res on it it's just a really good helmet also has a lot of hit recovery so if she does get hit she can uh get out of that animation sooner and catch up to us shaft stop 25 physical damage reduction uh shaft stops one of the cheapest versions of this that you could get you could also use a rock fleece and then i have a kind of nice verdungos on her again flat physical reduction hit recovery a bunch of vitality replenish life all that I'm using Threads of Cathan just because, like, if she's going to do any damage, she might as well kind of pierce sometimes. Honestly, I would say, like, anything with higher survivability or faster run walk would be better in this slot. She has a Witch Wild. I don't think Witch Wild's actually important, but, like, it is a good bow for an Act 1 Merc, and I happen to put it on her. Also, it has the 39 All Res, which kind of helps in case a cow explodes on her. But honestly, just getting a bunch of flat PDR stacked onto her means that she can survive and continue to give us Vigor Aura throughout the time that we are running through cows. All right, I'm done. I'm done being a corporate schmuck. 